Hello and welcome back to Bamboo Batu. Just got back from the European Bamboo Expo in Dortmund, Germany a few days ago. And still, uh, my head is still spinning with excitement uh, over all the great things I saw and great people I met. So today, real quick, I just want to go over some of the main highlights of the event, which were actually quite a few highlights, too many highlights to really summarize, but I'll do my best and I'm sure I will be leaving out a few things and a few people. And I apologize in advance for that. Uh, if you want to learn more about Bamboo, check out my website, bamboobatu.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel right here. Tons and tons of free info, free content, and good knowledge about Bamboo and the Bamboo industry. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but there's going to be uh, some key takeaways at the end. You can skip ahead to that if you really need to, or you can sit patiently through the video and absorb all the wonderful information that I'm about to present. Obviously, I prefer if you did it that way, but of course, it's up to you. So, uh, yeah, I arrived in uh, Dortmund, Germany last week. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in Germany, but I'd never been to Dortmund before, so that was interesting. Of course, one of the very first things I did was headed over to the uh, Botanical Garden, Romberg Park Botanical Garden. Um, super, super impressive Botanical Garden, and I've been to a lot of Botanical Gardens. This one's amazing. It's about 68 hectares, which is about 160 acres, I think, which is big. It's a lot of land. It's a lot of space to cover. There's a whole arboretum, all kinds of cool trees. There's a whole redwood grove. Uh, being a native Californian, it felt kind of nice to walk through a redwood grove again. It's not the same as uh, wandering through Big Sur exactly, but still really nice. These are some old trees. The park has been there since 1822, so that's 201 years of park planting and tree planting and uh, um, botanical organizing. And these Germans, they really know how to organize their their trees and their botanical uh, collections. Super impressive. Um, I had the distinct pleasure of touring the park with uh, my friend Juan Pablo from uh, Guatemala. He's doing some really cool bamboo projects down in Guatemala. You can find him on LinkedIn. Uh, I'll put a link to his website down below in the show notes here. Uh, but yeah, we had a super good time. This is us hanging out in the medicinal plant garden um, uh, lots and lots of medicinal and culinary plants, uh, flourishing here. Uh, we spent a few hours walking around, uh, 68 hectares. It takes a while to cover. And if you can't picture what that looks like, imagine that it takes about three or four hours to finally find the ginkgo grove, which we were looking for. And I'm not even sure that we found it, but we did find at least one ginkgo tree, ginkgo biloba tree. And we were standing underneath it, admiring the, uh, the beauty and then all of a sudden this happened and we were like whoa <laughs> it was really cool this is uh, not actually a photo i took this is a, something i got from the internet but a hawk similar to this maybe not quite as majestic came and landed right on a branch of a ginkgo tree and we were both stunned and amazed and i just had to include that in my slide presentation so there you go the hawk at the botanical gardens if you ever go to who, dortmund germany check out Rundberg park for sure uh, so the, uh, Bamboo Expo started the next day on Friday and it was, uh, an expo about European bamboo specifically. So one of the major sponsors of the event was Bamboo Logic. They're a company up in, uh, up in the Netherlands and they're farming bamboo in, uh, Portugal. They've got projects, um, underway in Spain, France, Italy, Greece. They're really, uh, taking the continent by storm which was pretty interesting because there's no native bamboo in Europe and the cost of land and labor and everything is a bit higher in Europe than it is in other places where bamboo does grow very well in the tropics. Uh, and so there was some amount of uh, discussion and controversy whether actually farming bamboo in Europe was the best idea or not. Um, so that was pretty interesting. The discussion got underway quite quickly. Here's a few of the key players. Uh, Eric Lee is there uh, on the uh, left. He was the organizer of the event. He's from Greece. He lives in Germany, and he is crazy about bamboo. And he put this whole thing together uh, with the help of a couple of his uh, friends. 
but he uh yeah he did a fantastic job everybody was just blown away by by how well organized uh this event was and um how well attended and everything else uh these other uh, characters here the three guys in uh yeah the three guys in the middle there Gil, Joost, and Hans, they're all uh, working with Bamboo Logic in one capacity or another. And there were some various presentations from them. Super interesting, super informative. Real neat to hear what they have going on. And then uh, Fabrizio Pecci from Only Moso, based in Italy. They, uh, as I understand, they were once the same Only Moso that's based in Florida. But at some point, uh, Roberto in Florida bought his uh, branch of Only Moso. So now they're separate. I don't know exactly how that all worked out. It's a bit of a mystery. Um, it's something worth delving into at some point, but not today. Um, how, how there got to be two different Only Mosos, one in Italy and one in, in uh, Florida, doing similar things. But he had a great presentation. Super interesting to hear what they have going on and what they have planned for the future for bamboo farming in Italy. Um, the the two day event, which is jam packed with speakers. Um, one of them I uh, really enjoyed Thomas Kier Kierinen. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I think he's from Belgium, uh, but he lives in Uganda. He's uh, he's the director or CEO of Bamboo Uganda. Uh, some super cool stuff he's doing um, down there to commercialize bamboo. Uh, it was really interesting to see, even with the small, relatively small area of bamboo, small volume, he's actually producing some, some engineered bamboo building material, construction material, which he's begun to export into Europe. And so that was really interesting to see and very inspiring to see that there's uh, commercialization and manufacturing with bamboo is starting to happen, even in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, even in a landlocked country like Uganda, which does not have any ports. Um, so their material has to get uh, trucked overland through through Kenya to get to a Mombasa port to ship it up to Europe. Uh, but he's making it happen. He's also got some really interesting ideas about uh, carbon credits and how bamboo carbon sequestration can be measured in, a, in an easier way, trying to develop a methodology specific to bamboo instead of using these other more complicated uh, models for other agroforestry projects, um, which can be very expensive and don't really work out for anyone farming bamboo unless they have at least several thousand hectares of bamboo, which most people don't. So he had some really interesting ideas about that. Uh, some other presentations, uh, yeah, it was went on and on, uh, back to back to back. I think there were 20 or 25 presentations each day. So something like 40 or 50, 60 presentations over the course of the weekend, which means I was not able to attend all of them. Um, but I attended quite a few and I appreciate the help on these photos. I pulled some of these photos from, uh, from Think Bamboo. Uh, I got some from some friends. I took some myself. And if I haven't uh, quite accurately and properly credited the photographers, I apologize for that. But it was a, it was a community event, and hopefully um, nobody minds if I use their photos. But uh, there's uh, yeah, there's me. Uh, that's Everest Holmes uh, in the orange uh, from National Bamboo, North Carolina. He came all the way out. Um, not too many people came out from the U.S., but he was there. Um, super cool dude. Um, He's a big fan of my YouTube page, which is cool. Apparently, he is able to understand my sense of humor, which puts him in a special class of his own. So it was really cool to hang out with him for a little bit. Uh, Eric Lees, of course, on my uh, on my left, your right, in the in the white long sleeve shirt there. Uh, again, uh, I've been working with him for a long time, but finally got to meet him in person. A real, real pleasure. Um, yeah, good times. Um, yeah, the camera really, uh, really adds, uh, yeah, it really makes those bags under my eyes look pretty big and adds a few pounds, but otherwise, otherwise good photo, good photo of the three of us hanging out. Uh, bamboo textile production was, um, showcased at the event. There's a company in Belgium called Belgium Bamboo, I believe, and they have a factory in Portugal. And I spent uh, many, 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 many years selling bamboo clothing in my store, Bamboo Batu. 
and explaining the clothing making process to people because everyone came in the store and said, how do they make this super soft clothing out of something like bamboo? And so I would have to explain it to the best of my ability. But uh, uh, this weekend, I actually learned a lot more about it than I ever knew, which was really great. So this is uh, on the left. You can see the little bamboo chips. First, they break the bamboo into wood chip, little chips. Then they smash it into, uh, pul they pulverize it into like a sawdust uh, in the middle there. And then there's the, the solvent uh, kind of chemical process. That's the kind of controversial part of the bamboo clothing to get it from the, uh, the sawdust state in the middle to the, um, to the pulp there on the, on the right. Um, it's like a, it's like a kind of a shiny, uh, soft pulp. And then that pulp is spun into, uh, into, uh, the, the fibrous, the fibrous stuff in that big jar in the back. Um, and so, uh, yeah, um, bamboo belgium they import that uh, the fibrous uh the white fluffy stuff from china but they are working on developing their own process to use uh, portuguese grown bamboo to do that and to develop a process that is more uh, uh less less chemical intense although they do have uh they would work with a factory that has been certified by a german regulatory agency uh, it's a Chinese factory, but regular, uh, but uh, tested and certified by the Germans to to ensure that all of the um, any chemicals and all the water is completely recycled and reused in a closed loop system, so that there's no pollution coming out of that factory. So she is, uh, yeah, she's really uh, forward thinking on the ball and doing good stuff with bamboo fabrics. Um, really, really nice to see that really informative and educational and also there's some examples of bamboo tissue culture another cutting edge technology with bamboo propagation uh something that's been around for a while it's not brand new but uh, we're seeing more and more of it with bamboo because of the interest in farming bamboo at a large scale it is difficult to propagate seeds uh, from bamboo and if you want to propagate the plants by cuttings it takes a long time to propagate enough plants to cover uh, a few hundred hectares or a few thousand hectares, uh, like some of these agroforestry projects that are sprouting up these days. So this is what it looks like. They, they uh, propagate from, from just a little bit of tissue in this kind of jelly substance, and then they can ship them, uh, ship little bamboo plantlets, little seedlings. They're not really grown from seed, but I still call them seedlings. Um, there's some different terminology. Sometimes they call this uh, in vitro bamboo, uh, bamboo tissue culture, micro tissue propagation, some different terminology for it, but it's really cool to see that up close and personal. Uh, meanwhile, outdoors, there were some cool construction activities going on. This is the, uh, um, uh, uh, the, uh, Iberian bamboo association. Um, uh, I think this is uh, Francisco and his brother. Unfortunately, I don't catch their names exactly. Um, but they are members, uh, as am I, of the Iberian uh, Bamboo Association. And they were putting together some really cool, uh, some really cool stuff outdoors, doing a workshop. Um, I've got more pictures from outdoors here somewhere. But uh, someone else I was really happy to meet was Paulino. Uh, he lives in Germany. He's from Mozambique. Um, the, uh, the light-skinned fellow on his shoulder. Uh, I do not remember his name, so his name is not here. But he was a really great guy, too. We all went out for falafel later. Had some really nice Syrian falafel. Uh, High-quality, crunchy falafel. Um, yeah, good uh, good uh, budget dining after an event in, in Germany. Can't beat that with some good friends and good food. Anyway, uh, Paulino's got some super cool stuff going on in Mozambique. Uh, I think I'll be talking more about that in videos in the future uh, because it's... Uh, some ideas worth talking about. So stay tuned for that. Uh, again, outdoors, uh, this is Vince Math, bamboo builder extraordinaire. He's a uh, German living in New York, but he travels the world to build bamboo projects. Uh, this is a clip from a video from Think Bamboo. If you want to check out Think Bamboo, they have videos on YouTube. I think they're also on TikTok and Instagram, and they've got a really good social media presence doing that kind of similar stuff to what I do 
but he's a little bit more skilled with the uh, the camera and the editing, I believe, and with the uh, the video videography. Um, anyway, Vince, uh, yeah, there's no E in Vince. That's not a misspelling. It looks like Vink, but it's pronounced Vince. A little bit confusing, but uh, once you get over that, you realize this guy really knows how to build some cool stuff with bamboo. So he was outdoors. Unfortunately, I was indoors most of the time, um, hobnobbing with the bamboo people and trying to check out as many presentations as I could. But uh, Vince had a very captive audience outdoors uh, checking out his uh, uh, parabolic bamboo structure building workshop. Uh, yeah, people were mesmerized, and rightly so, because he did some cool stuff. This was not one of Vince's projects, but this was another project uh, from another group, uh, some really cool bamboo, uh, construction right there. Um, yeah, just admire that uh, and check out up close. That's how the flooring works on that. Um, nothing complicated, just, uh, bamboo splits stacked, uh, on their sides, lined up real close, tight together. Um, no heavy engineering, uh, processing required. And really easy to clean. Just sweep it and all the dust like falls through the cracks. And great. But yeah, at the same time, it's nice and flat and smooth. Um, yeah. I just like that picture. Pretty neat. I took that picture myself, so no need to attribute it to anyone. Uh, thank you very much. And this is uh, Tono Aguilar from Casa in Guatemala. Really cool stuff he's doing in, uh, in uh, Guatemala. Uh, with bamboo, working with uh, local people, doing uh, low income, uh, low low cost bamboo houses from bamboo. Super fun guy, uh, super cool work he's doing. You can check out his website. I'll try to put a link to that down below too. Otherwise, you can Google him. He's also on LinkedIn, of course. And uh, great guy. And yeah, great presentation. Um, who else was there? Yana. Yana from Switzerland was there with this uh, German guy. They said, I did not catch his name. I'm sorry, his name is not here. But uh, maybe somebody uh, can pop that in the comment section down below because he really should be uh, uh, identified better. He had these really cool bamboo bikes uh, combining uh, the bamboo with other, uh, other materials. Uh, he had some kind of flax composite uh, for the connections on, the, on this bicycle, on bicycle parts. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. Um, Suzanne Lucas, uh, she's like the fairy godmother of the bamboo industry. She's been promoting bamboo for a long time. She was formerly the head or the director or the president, I'm not sure what they call it, of the American Bamboo Society. She's now the, um, the director of the World Bamboo Organization, the WBO who promote uh, bamboo projects, bamboo education, bamboo research all over the world. And everyone was just, uh, yeah, thrilled to have her there and to just uh, be in the presence of her, of her glowing personality. And uh, yeah, really amazing woman. Uh, yeah, really nice to have her there and, and uh, to meet her uh, finally after all these years. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, there's me. I was doing a little presentation on biochar for sure. You know me, I was talking about biochar, uh, promoting Plan Do, the company I work with. Uh, we do biochar projects all over the world. We're working with uh, bamboo growers in Africa and Southeast Asia. And of course that was fun. And um, what else did we have? I think that was about it. I was, uh, yeah, they kind of put my presentation toward the end. Um, and by that time, everybody was pretty exhausted, but uh, I still had a few people manage to come and sit through my presentation. Uh, I don't think anybody fell asleep as far as I could tell. So it was, uh, I would call it a success. Um, finally, there we all gathered on stage and uh, yeah, I'm getting all choked up over here. Listen to me. We had uh, everybody on stage together, singing and dancing and waving our arms. I'm, uh, I'm back there somewhere. Um uh, if you can find me, it's kind of like find Waldo on this one, but uh, I'm in there somewhere. Uh, photo credit, uh, there you go. Uh, and uh, last but not least, here's uh, here's one more photo from uh, from JJ Vait. Uh, we just call him JJ. He's uh, he's the man behind uh, Think Bamboo. Uh, like I said, he's got some cool videos and photos. 
on his uh, on his YouTube and uh, TikTok and, and uh, elsewhere on social media. And I thank him for this uh, this great photo of uh, the Bamboo Gang. Uh, it was quite quite a gathering, as you can tell. the The energy was uh, yeah super positive and amazing. So some key takeaways for me, uh, yeah, Bamboo is definitely growing. Whether it's a great idea or not, uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, there are no native bamboo species in Europe, and land is a lot more expensive here than it is in tropical countries. Um, so you can't grow really the tropical bamboos here that they grow in, in Indonesia and uh, Colombia. Um, but you can grow the temperate bamboos that they grow in China, and they are doing that. And whether it's uh, commercially competitive with uh, Latin American or West African or Southeast Asian bamboo. Uh, when you factor in the shipping, it's hard to tell. But at the end of the day, they want to grow bamboo in Europe for Europe. And by all means, why not do it? Um, they're not trying to stop anybody from growing bamboo in, in Colombia or Ecuador or, or Ghana or anywhere else for that matter. Um, this is what they're doing. And there were uh, some bits of criticism about it, but uh, Everybody's doing a different bamboo thing and more power to them. Um, bamboo processing, uh, lots of bamboo processing happening. I was really impressed to see that some pretty small scale projects were actually doing some very high quality engineered bamboo products. Um, there's a widespread uh, belief held by many, including myself, that in order to have a bamboo processing factory, you need something like five or 10,000 hectares of bamboo have enough volume to keep the factory running and be financially feasible but there were a couple people there doing some smaller scale stuff showing that you know you can do this on a small scale and it's still feasible of course with economies of scale being what they are it's going to be more feasible and more profitable if you're able to do it at a large scale but uh, it is still possible to do it at small scale which is cool uh carbon credits finally were something that everybody was talking about um nonstop conversations about carbon credits it got to be a little bit too much and there was uh some limited amount of skepticism expressed toward that but some good conversations started to happen around carbon credits and i did feel compelled to point out that yeah the uh obsession with carbon credits had uh appeared to me to be to, to have gone a little bit too far and people were losing track of, of what they were actually trying to do with bamboo and growing bamboo strictly for carbon credits is not really the way to go. Um, but, but carbon credits can be used as a tool to help finance projects to do something with bamboo. But the ultimate goal of, of those projects should be to make some amazing bamboo products to build bamboo houses to address uh, energy shortages and building material shortages and monetize a plant that grows super fast and absorbs tons of CO2 as it grows. And that should be the goal. And carbon credits are not the goal in themselves, but they're a tool to help finance those projects to help get some money uh, from the carbon carbon credit market um, to, to help finance these projects to get the bamboo planted in the ground and, and going. Uh, but the ultimate goal, like I said, would be to actually use the bamboo for something more important. So um, that suggestion was uh, was uh, well uh, regarded and, and respected. And I think everybody, in the end, everybody agreed with me, basically, which was great. So uh, that was it. That was the Bamboo Expo. It was an amazing and good time. Super, uh, super fun, connecting with people, good conversations. Uh, sometimes people disagreed. Mostly they agreed, but uh, the disagreements were healthy and productive and it's important that we have those conversations because there's so many people working on bamboo projects all around the world. Some of them are in a little bubble doing their thing and feedback, both positive and negative is essential if any project is going to move forward and improve and make a positive impact. So it was a great event. There will be more events like this uh, in the future, I can assure you, and you'll hear about it here at Bamboo Batu. So stay tuned and keep up the great work and we will see you next time. Oh, that's me getting dropped off at the airport by Eurycles. Uh I got there at the last minute just in time for my flight and uh, yeah, it could not have worked out better. It was a, a fine ending to a fine weekend. And yeah, 
that wraps it up here. We'll see you next time. Ciao.